bloody squeaky chair. The Necron Triarc Stalker, is it hit or miss? Which guns to take and how to use them? It's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. And if you're new to the channel and you want to keep up to date with all things Necrons, then please subscribe and hit the bell button to turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Okay, so here we go, the first in a series of hit and miss videos where I'm going to review and have a good look at the units within the Necron Codex. Now, if there's a particular unit that you would like me to review, then let me know in the comments box below. Today, though, it's the Triarch Stalker. Okay, so let's have a look at the Stalker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a hit and miss just above me, and we're going to score the stats as we go along and find out if this unit is a hit or a miss in the Necron Codex. So first of all, let's have a look at the stats line. Okay, so the unmodified stats line is a movement of 10 inches. It's got a weapon skill and a ballistic skill of three plus. It's strength seven and toughness six with 10 wounds. It has three attacks, leadership 10, and a very nice three plus save. And you get all that for a mere 85 points base cost, plus of course the weapon options. Now if you consider the strength and the toughness of this little tank, spider, robotic, walker thing, then actually for 85 points base, those stats are pretty good. So that's going to be a hit for the stats, however, the problem with this little vehicle is that it does deteriorate as you take wounds. So once you're reduced to half wounds, between three and five wounds, your movement is eight inches and your weapon skill and ballistic skill is reduced to four plus. And then on one or two wounds, your movement is six inches and then your ballistic skill and weapon skill is a five plus. Now this is quite huge, especially when we look at some of the weapon options later in the video. So that's going to be a miss for the deterioration of this unit as it takes wounds. And that brings me nicely on to the next thing that I want to talk about, and that's the keywords stroke faction keywords. So all we have on this unit is a vehicle, Triarc Stalker and Necrons. So first of all, there's no fly special rule. That's going to limit us on our movement. It also means that we can't fall back from the assault and shoot our guns and you do want to be shooting this spider which we'll find out more about as we go through the video but for now that's definitely a miss for no fly keyword plus on top of that even worse there's no dynasty code no dynasty code for this unit is a big drawback not being able to use some of our faction keyword specific special rules is a big disadvantage, especially when it comes to, again, some of the weapons and options that we've got on the tank. So sadly, it's going to be another miss for no dynasty code. So we know the Stalker is toughness six with 10 wounds and has a three plus save. Not amazing, but not bad for the points that we're playing. Plus, in the abilities, it has two other things to help it survive. And that, of course, is quantum shielding and living metal. Now, quantum shielding is very, very useful for those big guns that shoot at it. Now, a good player, of course, will be able to bypass your quantum shielding. You're not invincible with that quantum shielding, especially if you get hit with lower damaged weapons. They can eat through your wounds very easily. So you do have to be mindful of that but quantum shielding is certainly very useful. And if you do survive the shooting, then you've got living metal allowing you to regain one wound at the beginning of each Necron turn. So it's definitely a little bit more survivable than the stat line appears. So that's going to be another tick for a hit. Now, of course, the Triarch Stalker will explode 
if it's destroyed. However, it's only on a 6 plus and it's just a small bubble of 6 inches doing D3 mortal wounds to units in range. A 1 in 6 chance of exploding, nothing really to worry about and most vehicles have this anyway. So it's not going to affect the score for this video. However, the next ability is going to affect the score and that's targeting relay, which reads like this. You can re-roll hit rolls of a one for any friendly Necrons that make a shooting attack against a unit that has already been attacked by a Triarch Stalker in this phase. Now that is pretty awesome and the inspiration for the hit and miss theme of this video because this ability works whether you hit or miss the units that you target. All you have to do is target the unit and then the rest of your Necron's army can re-roll the ones when they shoot at that particular unit. And it gives you the ability to target a unit to really try and focus it down. For example, if you've got a squad of Orc boys coming at you, there's 30 of them there. If you leave a few stragglers there, they're going to use two CPs, pass morale, and then they're going to use the stratagem, allowing them to come back, the whole unit coming back, wasting all of your shots. The Triarch Stalker gives you the ability to put as many shots into that unit as you can to try and wipe it out so that it can't come back. The Triarch Stalker targeting relay is definitely a hit. Now the Triarch Stalker has three gun options. We've got the twin Heavy Gauls Cannon coming in at 40 points. We then have the Heat Ray also coming in at 40 points. And for 10 points less, we have the Particle Shredder. Now, depending on which gun you take, it's going to have a big impact on the tactics and how you use your Triarch Stalkers. So what I'm going to do now is go table down and have a look at some examples of how we can use those gun options to our advantage. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at the twin heavy gauze cannon. So this is 36 inches. It's a heavy two. It's strength nine with a minus four AP and it does D6 damage. So this is a heavy hitting gun, albeit only two shots. Okay, so the key thing here is it's a heavy weapon. Now, as it has no dynasty code, we can't take it in the Sotek dynasty, allowing us to move and shoot at normal ballistic skill. So if you move the Stalker with this gun, you're going to be shooting on ballistic skill four when it's at its full wounds. Now, of course, you don't want to be doing that. You've only got two shots. It's a nice big gun and ideally you want it to actually be hitting and wounding, taking full advantage of the damage that it can do. So what you want to be doing when you're using this gun is keeping it at range and not moving it. So when it comes to deployment, you want to get the best line of sight on the table that you can. Now sadly you can't deploy it on a level of a building to get best line of sight, you're stuck to the ground level. So you've really got to think about where you're going to deploy it before the game. What I would do is work out where it's going but not actually place it down on the table until the end of your deployment in hope that you can work out where your enemy is going to be deployed so you can get the best line of sight possible. Now, being a vehicle, it does mean that if you can get it touching a building and you can position it with your little legs which go up and down, the leg sticking out, of course, has line of sight so I can shoot all the way over this side of the table with a massive arc, which is fantastic. Plus, I'm going to be 50% obscured from most table positions, allowing me to have a 2 plus cover save as I'm touching the building and I'm 50% obscured. And if I can stay in that position all game without moving the Stalker, then at least I'm shooting on threes with that big gun. Okay, so we know that the Triarch Stalker with the big gun is going to stand at the back, use its range, try not to move, and shoot with the big gun. So of course the big guns are great for anti-tank and of course anti-monstrous creatures. Now, the great advantage with this using the targeting relay is that when you're using things like doomsday arcs, preferably on the top of a building, now this is a great combination because, of course, 
both are tank killing guns and the Triarch Stalker gives the Doomsday Arc the ability to re-roll the ones to hit. Now of course the Doomsday Arcs you could take in the Nihilic Dynasty, however you may not have the ability in your list to take the Nihilic Dynasty, or more importantly you might want to play them in the Sotek Dynasty so that you can move these and still shoot that gun at the lower profile. So having them in the Sotek Dynasty, great, and now with this you have the ability still to re-roll the ones. So it's a very nice combination. Now the disadvantage of this gun is once you've shot all of the vehicles and monstrous creatures off of the table, or indeed if there's none on the table to start with, then your gun is a little bit wasted. You don't really want to be shooting two heavy gauze cannons into say a unit of 30 boys just to kill maybe two boys if you're lucky just to get the re-rolls from the targeting relay of course it's very good but you're almost wasting the gun shooting at two orc boys with a big heavy hitting gun that's the main disadvantage with having a triarch stalker with the twin heavy gauze cannon now if you were in a position where there was no big things on the table for you to actually shoot with the big guns then you're actually probably better off pushing it forward and actually just using it as a distraction unit maybe grabbing an objective to get some points of course it's not objective secured but you can at least take objectives and it's actually quite big so you can spread it out and make it quite difficult for your opponent to actually take that objective from you. Now of course you can still use the targeting relay even though you've moved Yes, you're going to be hitting on fours, but it doesn't really matter if you actually hit, you only have to target a unit. And then, of course, the rest of the army benefits from that, and you're not wasting your shots just by standing still. You're making good use of your points, even though you've got a weapon that can't do much damage. So the twin heavy gauze cannon, a nice gun, good range, allowing you to stand back and shoot, which Necrons lack a little bit of. A great supporting units for other big guns, like on your Doomsday arcs. And worst case scenario, if there wasn't anything to shoot those big guns at, you could just push him forward and use him as a distraction unit if there wasn't any big targets on the table. Okay, so next is the Particle Shredder, which is 24 inches. It's a heavy six, strength seven, minus one AP, and does D3 damage. Now for me, this is probably the weakest gun out of the three options. 24 inches, heavy six, so you're guaranteed to have six shots, which is a good amount of shots, however it's still heavy. So if you're moving, you're going to be shooting at that minus one ballistic skill. It's strength seven, which is reasonable, and it's minus one AP, and it does D3 damage. So it's a reasonable gun, but just not as tasty as the other options that we've got. Now in terms of tactics, personally I'd take this unit and I would still keep it in a position, getting my cover save and of course getting line of sight. However, with the shorter ranged gun you're going to have to be a bit more particular with this. Ideally what you want to be doing is setting up objectives within 24 inches of the stalker so when your enemy takes the objectives you've got six shots coming in strength seven minus one ap and doing d3 damage that is quite reasonable and of course once you've hit that unit the rest of your army is able to shoot it and re-roll the ones however that 24 inch range is a bit of a downfall so you may have no choice but just to push it forward and be minus one ballistic skill. At least you know you've got six shots even though you're hitting on fours. And of course, the key thing with this is to get the target relay working. So if your enemy isn't too close, then you might have to push it forward and just sacrifice the ballistic skill. Okay, so next is the heat ray. Now, when you're attacking with this gun, you have two profiles. You have dispersed, which is eight inches, and a heavy 2d6, strength 5, minus 1 AP, and does 1 damage. Now, when you use this profile, this weapon automatically hits its target. And then you have the focused beam, which is 24 inches, heavy 2. This is strength 8, 
minus 4 AP and does D6 damage. Now when you use this profile, if the target is within half range, you roll two dice when inflicting damage and disregard the lowest result. So pretty good at both taking out vehicles and also shooting hordes at close range. Having the option to shoot either infantry or vehicles, of course, means that you're not going to be wasting any shots trying to get the target relay working for the rest of your army, unlike a twin heavy gauze cannon shooting into a squad of 30 boys. So how do we use this particular version? Well, of course, yes, you could set him up in the terrain here, a bit like the Shredder, aim for an objective within 24 inches. However, I believe that the best way to use this one is actually to go all out and push him forward. Now, of course, you will be at minus one. However, the idea is to get as close as you can to shoot at a vehicle with your 24 inch gun. And of course, then unload your doomsday arcs into that vehicle, re-rolling the ones. Now, when you get close enough, the damage on the Triarch Stalker is even better because of course you get to disregard the lowest dice for damage. So it likes to get close. And when it is close, if there's infantry around, you've got that eight inch flamer effectively because it automatically hits. Great for shooting, but also great if you're assaulted. Auto hit for Overwatch, very nice indeed. So it's definitely designed to be up close and personal with the exception, like all of these Triarch Stalker variants, is we don't have the fly keyword. Now in close combat, which we haven't covered yet, it has massive forelimbs, which is strength seven, minus one AP, and it does D3 damage. It's not bad, three attacks, but of course it's not a beast in close combat. And if you're not surrounded and you are able to actually make a fallback move, of course you can't shoot afterwards. So you are disabling your targeting relay ability, which of course is one of the key things with the Stalker. Okay, so there you go. The three gun options, as you can see, are all pretty useful and usable on the table. And that's going to be another hit for the Triarch Stalker. Now on top of that, the Triarch Stalker is pretty cheap. It has the advantage that we can either just slot one in our army, or ideally, let's have more than one and actually start mixing our weapon options depending on the tactics that we want to use. Why not have one or two sitting at the back with the heavy gauze cannons, maybe one pushing forward with the heat ray. Very versatile and cheap. And that's going to be another hit for the Triarch Stalker. And as you can see from the results, I believe the Triarch Stalker is a big hit for the points in our codex, even with some of the restrictions that it has. But let me know what you think of the Triarch Stalker. How many do you play in your list? And what gun options you're taking? I would be very interested to know that. Now, I've magnetized my Triarch Stalker with all three gun options. So I'll link you up to the video, which shows you how you can do that just there. And here's another Necron video, which I think you'll enjoy. And if you're not subscribed yet, start now and hit the Idic Beer icon. Beam me up.